today's topic as uh, you can see india's emerging market tomatoes tomato and tomato processing solutions tomatoes is a very hot topic these days because we have seen variation from 200 rupees a kg to 5 rupees 5 kg also or even to rupees 3 per, uh, per kg as well uh so let's understand the objectives of today's webinar uh we'll try to understand the global and indian scenario we will also try to understand why why there is a need of processing uh what all we can do in tomato processing and what are the emerging areas for tomato processing and why it is beneficial for indian uh, processors to go into this particular area uh let's understand first the global and indian scenario so as you can see india is the second largest country in terms of population and also in terms of volume of tomatoes produced which is more than 20 million tons in fiscal year of 2019 and 20 so if you can see the table after china india ranks second in terms of the actual production although we are the second largest in terms of production the processing expense is very low in comparison with the rest of the world so in terms of global based manufacturing as well as exports india doesn't rank within first 15 countries also so that is why there is a need of processing and there is also area where we can grow and where we can capture this particular market tomatoes in india indian economy is predominantly dependent on the agriculture sector which normally contributes 16 to 17% of the gdp tomato is one of the most important crop and that is why government of india has also identified it among the top so when we say top it is tomatoes onion and potato so this is the priority list and government has announced a lot of subsidies lot of uh, benefits for processing of this the three top staple fonts in the country symbolizes the government's india initiative that is called operation green and operation green and tops are ranking among the very good uh, initiatives taken by the government of india that is to improve the condition of the farmers and that is also to help the processors to grow in this particular market let's understand why there is a need of processing and uh, once you see these slides you will understand uh, why there is a need of uh, processing in tomatoes so the photograph you see over here is a tomatoes thrown on the side of the road because farmers are not able to actually afford the transport of these tomatoes to the market so the rate which is being offered to the farmers it is so less that they are just throwing the tomatoes uh, on the sides of the roads and these photographs we have seen from time to time in various uh, newspapers in uh, all the news reels on the channels and different things so in india the post harvest losses of tomatoes are very huge and they basically offer duty uh, due to the inadequate inadequate storage facilities and this loss can be as high as 12 to 13% which globally is around 2 to 3% so we are very having very high uh, wastage or a very high uh, post harvest losses for tomatoes the preservation of tomatoes uh, in semi processing condition not only takes care of marketable surplus but it also ensures the surplus raw materials for finished products like sauces ketchups paste juice and other processed products from tomatoes earlier scenario or this scenario is there for a uh, quite number of times or quite number of years slowly the things are changing in india and we will see the results in the coming years as well so here you see a uh, number of news articles tomatoes dumped because the rates crash up to 3 rupees a kg or, or farmers are dumped because it is 2 rupees a kg or even 1 and 1/2 rupees a kg 5 rupees a kg so all this we are seen at number of places not only maharashtra but across india this is the latest news uh, as you can see uh, dated september 26th so hardly two weeks back because from 200 rupees a kg it boiled down to 5 rupees and if you go through the article in the article they say it is up to 2 or 3 rupees a kg also 
That is how the farmers are in dire states or they are just abandoning or destroying their crop. And that is why all this processing of tomatoes will be very important in the coming years. So what all we can do in the processing of tomatoes? Let's try to understand that. So in tomato processing lines, we can have dices, so cubes of tomatoes, and these are typically in tomato puree. Then we can have peeled tomatoes. The whole tomatoes are peeled and dipped into the tomato puree. Both the things are very popular in the horeca segment. Tomato paste, which is the most common and most converted area for tomato to tomato paste, which is the base for a lot of sauces, ketchups, and other things. Pizza sauce, pasta sauce, ketchup. Of course, a lot of people know that sauce and ketchup, these are two different terms. We will not go into integrities of that, but these are two different terms. It can be drinkable juice as well. India is very dominant in tomato drinkable juice and tomato powder. Again, tomato powder has a lot of applications. We'll see in the coming slides. Uh, this is a general chart for uh, what you can say consolidated chart. I'm 100% sure you will not be able to see because the chart is so big. And in order to have it on one single screen, it has been reduced or it has been zoomed down. So those people who are interested, we can share it afterwards. But these are the areas where all the tomatoes and different products can be uh, processed from a, a tomato as a raw material. So tomato processing solutions, uh, peeled tomatoes. The dice and peeled tomatoes are part of the overgrowing market of processed tomatoes. You can see uh, Del Monte tops different companies. Uh, the can open shows uh, the cubes of tomato in the tomato puree. And this is also one of the most popular demand, in demand uh, particular application for the tomatoes. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, diced tomatoes is in demand for Horeca segment. Gen Z is a surge in usage from the hospitality industry and increase in demand for nutrient rich foods that drive this particular growth of the sector. Uh, you can see the peeled and diced tomatoes imports in this particular chart. Uh, chart starts from 2009 to 2020. Okay, and you can see we have been importing largely earlier from China and then from Italy. So these are also areas where India can be self-sufficient because we are number two in tomato growing or tomato manufacturing, but we are still importing a lot of canned tomatoes from these particular countries. So let's try to address this and let's produce uh, our own uh, canned tomatoes so that we don't have to be dependent on China, Italy or other countries for this particular item. Ketchup. So ketchup is made from tomato paste, which is a basic ingredient, spices, salt, sugar, vinegar, starch, onion, garlic paste, and whatever we want into that. And these are added uh, in the extent that ketchup does not contain less than 12% of the solids and 28% of the total solids. We have different players in the market, more than 100 players are there predominantly in the ketchup sector. Uh, so, trying to show you some photographs of the existing ketchup line, how a typical ketchup line is going to look like. Uh, this is a typical ketchup line uh, and the section which we are seeing on the screen is particularly preparation of sugar syrup, paste unloading and ingredient mixing section. Uh, this is installed in Parman Nutrition for Hindustan in your plant and the capacity of the plant is 6000 kgs per hour. A typical flow chart for the tomato ketchup. Again, uh, we see sugar syrup preparation, sugar syrup preparation, sugar syrup storage tank. Then on the other side, we have tomato paste unloading, uh, pumping, and dilution tank. And for small ingredients, we have various tanks, or it can be a common tank, uh, which contains starch preparation, salt preparation, vinegar, demineralized water, and microelements. This all are going into mixing, heating, the deaeration, homogenization, pasteurization, then it can be filled into bottle or it can be filled into the pouch or it can be filled in sachet, depending on the application, depending on the size. And then we'll have the uh, 
बॉटल कूलर और बॉटल पॉइस्चराइजर कूलर और पाउच कूलर स्पायरल कूलर फॉर द पाउचेस then we'll have dryer and then we can have labeling and bottle packaging or the secondary packaging so this is a typical flow chart for the catch up line uh so this is a chart for the imports of the tomato ketchup and sauces uh figures post covid have been not actually generated till now but you can see we have been importing a large amount of tomato ketchup again although we have more than 100 players still there is a so much of room to for the ketchup manufacturers so that india becomes self sufficient in ketchup manufacturing we don't have to import uh tomato paste processing uh, typical photographs uh, we will try to understand for the tomato paste processing so globally the tomato paste lines are from 60 to 100 tons per hour we are talking about tons per hour we are not talking about tons per day and the idea is because the tomato season at many many countries is very short ranging from 60 days to 90 days or maximum 100 days so in those 100 days they have to produce the entire produce for the year so that is why these lines are globally very high size in india the typical line size are from 6 tons to 20 25 tons per hour so 6 tons is what we call as the base uh, capacity and uh, the recent installation we had done is for 20 tons per hour uh the smallest line which can be produced is 3 tons per hour because we need to understand from 6 kg of tomato we are going to get 1 kg of tomato paste so the conversion or the yield ratio is 16% so that is why 3 tons is going to give me say maybe 500 kg of tomato paste and it can have single head aseptic filler so the aseptic filler will fill the tomato paste into aseptic bag and this aseptic bag will have a shelf life of 24 months so that is 2 years so even if i have to transport my uh, tomato paste to say to south africa or to south america canada still in one one and a half months i still have a left uh, life or shelf life of 22 months uh this is a typical flow chart of the tomato paste line uh on the left hand side we see the receiving of the tomatoes going into the flume washing going into the elevator from elevator it will go to the hopper from hopper it will go to hot break from hot break it goes to turbo refiner it is removing the seeds and peel from the tomato the clear juice is stored in the tomato juice storage tank from tomato juice storage tank it will go to double effect or triple effect uh evaporator the stages or number of effects of the evaporator will depend on the capacity of the plant or the amount of evaporation that we need to carry about after the tomato paste is uh, concentrated to 28 or 30 bricks or whatever bricks we want it goes further for the sterilization sterilization post sterilization it will go for cooling by cooling tower water and cooling by chill water and then it is filled in aseptic bags at the atmospheric temperature which has got a shelf life of 24 months as i mentioned earlier so these are typical photos of tomato paste plant uh, what you see on the left hand side is a typical evaporator double effect evaporator with hot break on the right hand side uh, the processing capacity of this plant is 6 uh, tons per hour this has been installed in amritsar on the right hand side you see uh, almost similar uh, evaporator for same capacity plant which has been installed in pr uh this both the plants are more than 12 13 years old both capacities are 6 tons per hour that is input of tomatoes uh this is a typical line for 20 tons per hour that is 20000 kg per hour input of tomatoes uh on the right hand side we see a flume which is used for unloading of tomatoes uh the unloaded tomatoes are getting washed in the flume then they are carried on the elevator you can see inclined elevator which is a roller conveyor on which we also have uh, two uh, two lines of spray of the uh, fresh water which is going to wash the tomatoes after coming out from the flume and then we have sorting table on the sorting table we have people standing you know, on the both the sides and taking out the rotten tomatoes or unripe tomatoes uh, post sorting we see a hopper in the left hand corner center and that hopper is collecting the tomatoes and the whole tomatoes are getting transferred to hot brick unit 
So there is no chopping, there is no cutting of tomatoes. The entire tomato in a compressed condition is being transferred to hot brick. So here you see a hot brick unit on the right hand side of the structure. And that hot brick unit is actually receiving the tomatoes which are coming from inside. And the inside atmosphere of that particular hot brick is maintained at 1995. So what happens? The tomatoes which are atmospheric temperature 30, 35 degrees are directly exposed in a temperature of 90 to 95. Tomato breaks down instantaneously. All the particles of tomato reach the temperature of 90, 92 degrees centigrade instantaneously. So there is no gradual heating in this. So there is no chopping. There is no gradual heating in this. And that is why we call it as a hot break. So when we say hot break, it is breaking of the tomatoes in hot atmosphere. So it is not chopping of the tomatoes and then heating it. It is basically breaking of the tomatoes in hot atmosphere. Post breaking of the tomatoes, the juice is collected at the bottom from the pump. It is recirculated through heat exchanger. It goes on the top where you see the board neologic. There is a turbo refiner just behind that. The turbo refiner will refine the juice, removing the seeds and peel because tomatoes peel is very thin. So it will be removing this seeds and peel and then it will transport the clear juice to tomato juice storage tank, which you see on the right hand corner of the structure. So this particular tank is going to feed the clear juice to the evaporator. So what you see uh, on the structure on the right hand side is the hot break, the board where the neologic appears. We have three stages of the tomato paste evaporator. So this is a typically triple effect tomato paste evaporator. Now we are giving the steam to first effect and it is going to heat the tomato juice, vaporizing or taking out excess water from that. The vapors of the first and second effect are going to heat the next effects. So that is how we are going to save in terms of consumption of the steam. So my vapors of the different effects are going to heat the juice for the next stages. We have online bricks meter just below the structure, which is going to constantly measure the bricks, which is getting concentrated uh, from the tomato juice to the tomato paste. At a certain level where we have a tomato paste bricks 28 to 30, the tomato paste is transferred to the next station. So next station is inside, that is aseptic sterilizer. Here you see the aseptic sterilizer for the tomato paste and the bottom portion is typically the heating or sterilizing of tomato paste. At center, uh, we have a holding section. Post holding section, we have aseptic diversion wall. So if my temperature is not reached, I'm about to divert my tomato paste back to reprocessing. Once the temperature is raised, it has a certain time of holding. I am transferring it for the cooling. And there are two sections, cooling by cooling tower water. And the second section is going to be cooling by chill water. Uh, you can see uh, on the right hand side, the product tank. So the product tank is predominantly collecting the tomato paste from the coming out from the evaporator. And the entire process is maintained in aseptic condition. So when I say at aseptic condition, there is no contact of tomato paste with the atmosphere. So that is why it will have a shelf life of 24 months. Then this is the filler. The filler is going to actually fill the tomato paste into the aseptic bags. Uh, the aseptic bags are put in the drum and the drum is weighed. Uh, the load cell will give me how much kg has been actually calculated or how much has been transferred. The label printer will print how much kg has been put in that particular aseptic bag. So this is about the tomato paste line, which we recently installed and commissioned in Bihar. So the total value of imports of finished product, that is canned tomatoes, sauces, and paste, uh, reach almost 20.64 million US dollars, which is very high. And likewise, the total quantity of imports grew by 146% in 2019. 2021, it went down because of the COVID, but of course it has increased once again. So you see the amount of imports we are doing in these particular products, and that is why the need of processing, and that is why more and more processing plants should come. Uh, the photograph you see uh, on the right-hand side is typical big plant, which is processing 120 tons of tomato into tomato paste. That is why so much huge quantities of tomatoes are arrived at the plant. The total value of tomato paste imports during the year 1920 reached 19 million US dollars. 
which was 160% higher uh, registered in the same year. Nearly 72% imports came from China, followed by USA, Spain, Italy, and Chile. So we can be really self-sufficient in this if we decide that combined with government, farmers, and the processors, we put more number of plants in this particular area. These are the imports of tomato paste. As you can see, uh, a very high tower, especially in the year 2019, and similar high towers in 22, 23 also are going to be there. So that is why the processing is must, because we are importing so much quantities of tomato paste. These are typical rates uh, available for tomato paste. So if I consider China, uh, the China for 220 kg accepted bags, typical rate for uh, per metric ton is 1167 US dollars. So that is 1.16 US dollars per kg of tomato paste, and which is very attractive, which is going to give me or give us all processors a good uh, profitability in the end. China, although being one of the, what you can say, the cheapest, if we see the rest of the countries, you will understand why I'm saying China is one of the cheapest. So when I say California, it is almost the rate is exactly double. Of course, this depends on the rates of tomatoes and the processing cost of those particular countries as well. So each kg of tomato paste in California is 2.142 US dollars. These are historical prices right from 2009 to September 23. So this chart was recently published on 30th of September. So the latest one, and you can see the rise of tomato paste prices globally, because overall in the global scenario, the demand for tomato paste is growing very high. A lot of people going in, are going for ketchup sauces and other products. Okay. So let's try to understand that there are other aspects. Uh, with growing urban consumption, Pizza and pasta sauces are also growing very fast. So in fact, the growth rate is 43% per annum since last couple of years. Uh, apart from tomato ketchup, this sector is one of the fastest uh, sector for tomato processing. These are some typical lines for uh, pizza sauce, pasta sauce, and gravies, uh, typically for machinery for the same. Again, installed by Neologic some of the photographs of the caters and other lines. So tomato juice, uh, the countries which actually consume the highest amount of tomato juice uh, were India, uh, ranking number one. So we will be surprised that we may not be aware that a lot of people actually require uh, a tomato juice. Uh, as a food for them or as a breakfast item for them. So India had 109k tons, Japan came second and Canada came third. So with combined India, Japan and Canada, uh, the entire 55% share of the global consumption is within these three countries. So again, a scope for a lot of scope for tomato juice uh, for us to process into these particular areas. So in terms of value, China constituted the largest supplier of tomato juice. Uh, again, as I mentioned, we have imported a lot of tomato juice because although we are second highest in manufacturing or producing of tomatoes, the expense or the processing is very less. And that's why we need to address this particular issue. The second position for, for the imports came from USA and third, it was followed by China, uh, Germany. Tomato powder, uh, again, it has got a lot of applications. Uh, the market for tomato powder was predicted to touch around uh, US dollars of 1842 million by year 2027. And this is export to almost 106 countries. Uh, in the year 2021, uh, India exported tomato powder worth 10.98 uh, US dollars, uh, million US dollars. So tomato powder can be used in bakery, confectionery, frozen desserts, nutrition food, curries, gravies, and soups. So soup is one of the most popular uh, uh, output for that. Let's uh, try to understand the emerging areas in tomato processing.
so export potential presently nepal is one of the major uh, export partner for india uh, or trading partner which holds around 59% of tomato paste so whatever we are producing 59% is going to nepal and next comes bhutan so there is so much of demand to rest of the countries because the consumption of tomato paste globally is very high in comparison with india indian people consume a lot of fresh tomatoes but the paste consumption is very high across the globe and there is the area where we should be targeting in 1920 the total volume of tomato paste exports from india stood 187000 us dollars uh, a significant growth of nearly 160% was recorded in comparison with 1890 so uh, you can see this market is growing very fast and tremendously the tremendous demand in african continent southeast asia gulf region due to supply shortfall because uh, there is a lot of lot of shortfall from china both because of geopolitical reasons as well as some disease on the chinese tomatoes last few years so in terms of export potential again 23% growth in exports in canned products like peeled tomatoes diced tomatoes and tomato juice and we are also seen that there is shortfall of import so we produce we are exporting but still there is a shortfall for the indian consumption as well so we can also target this particular market so india actually exported around 138.19 million tons of canned tomatoes in 1920 so again as i mentioned earlier exports to nepal acquired almost 53% of total trade volume for process items of tomatoes the remaining 47% was between kazakhstan estonia georgia china and middle east europe and southeast asia again 23% of tomato ketchup and tomato sauce were exported to usa again there is a lot of scope for our people because usa canada are these are two big countries which are consuming tomato ketchup and sauces in very high uh, pattern some of the quantities of tomato sauce and ketchup exported to usa and other countries are in sub, sub african uh, continent and looking at the, the, the demand of this particular uh, atoms it's a sector where we should see a tremendous growth in the coming years these are some of the figures for volume of indian exports commodity wise in the year 1920 so on the left hand side we see tomato paste center we see canned tomatoes and on the right hand side we see tomato sauce so again we have a lot of scope for exports although we are exporting to nepal nepal is a very small country and we have a lot of other countries where we can export this so there is a lot of scope for exporting tomato paste canned tomatoes and tomato sauces looking ahead uh, in india the domestic consumption of products derived from processed tomatoes outweighs the tomato production uh, of processed tomatoes so the demand is more and the supply is still uh, quite less based on the production of estimates and the import export data the apparent consumption of processed tomato is going to be around 278000 metric tons in 1920 and increase of more than 20% annually since 1718 so it is growing by more than 20 23% every year so similar growth pattern is expected in the coming years so estimated uh, what you can say domestic demand uh, versus national production so the demand you see in the pink or red color and the processed quantities or what we are producing is in yellow color so you can actually see the gap over the years the gap or uh, the demand has increased and we are almost same in terms of processing so we have not increased our processing capacity or we have not increased our supply capacity and the demand is growing year by year so if i compare this to 23 or 22 23 or 23 24 it is still the gap is still very huge and you can see this is in terms of metric tons
So India's demand for processed tomato products is growing by approximately um, 30% annually due to a rising population, increased consumer demand. Uh, COVID also changed the habits of the foods. Uh, then demand for the items like pizza, pasta, uh, ketchups, ready to eat items. A lot of items have tomato puree as their base, gravies, and then bulk food suppliers and retail chains and fast food restaurants. So all this has actually increased the demand uh, by almost 30% every year. The Indian market is also witnessing a strong product diversification with expansion into curry or gravies, ready to eat curries, dry powder mixes, in addition to the traditional product products like tomato ketchup and tomato puree and tomato juice. So we also have retail packs of tomato paste for orica segment nowadays. And we also have dried tomatoes, especially used for what you can say, pizza and other items. Looking ahead, the per capita consumption, which was 0.17 kg in 2018 19, is likely to reach 0.54 kgs per capita consumption, I'm talking by year 23 24 this year. And the recent estimate actually suggests that it is going to reach 0.7 kg per capita. So this is also almost going to be more than four times uh, increase in last few years. The growth in tomatoes processing has been actually triggered by increase in domestic consumption, specifically in Horeca segment of the products derived from processed tomatoes. According to NRAI India Food Services report, the market size of Indian Horeca segment is estimated to be almost 150,000 crores, which is equivalent to 20 billion US dollars in 1819. So when we talk about 2022, 23 or 24, 24, it is going to be almost more than 250,000 crores or 35 billion US dollars uh, in terms of value. So huge market. So let's try to take a recap. We, what we have covered till now. So we understood the global and Indian scenario. We understood what is happening in Indian scenario typically why there is a need for processing because we have seen a lot of tomatoes being thrown on the road and this actually could have gone to processing. We also understood, although India being number two in produce, producing tomatoes globally, we are not even in first 15 or 20 countries in terms of processing of the tomatoes. So why there is a need for the processing? What all products can be processed in the tomatoes and different atoms or different products which can be processed from tomatoes, which can be ketchup, sauces, diced tomatoes, peeled tomatoes, tomato puree, tomato paste, and a lot of items. And we also try to understand the import potential, export potential, uh, why there is so much of need of processing, how we can cover the gap, what is the demand and supply of tomato processed products, and how that gap is still increasing, why we should be going into more and more processing so that the farmers have also benefited and the industry is also benefited. So this is how what, what we all covered in this particular uh, recap or this is uh, what we covered in the webinar till now. So it's also time for question and answer. So uh, Shrish and Nikhil, I, I hand over to you and then I can answer the questions uh, what are they appear here. Yeah, thanks, uh, Sri Krishna. I think it has been a wonderful <coughs> presentation. Uh, I'm sure um, uh, a lot of, uh, I, mean, they, I mean, they have a lot of questions from the uh, our audience as well. And um, I, I think uh, just to summarize uh, some of the questions together in, in what different categories are there. I think the first and the most, uh, I think, relevant question will be about you know, the yield of uh, the, the, the tomato paste uh, from the fruits, uh, from the tomato uh, that you start with. So, what is the yield, and how can it be improved? Uh, does it ha does the season seasonality of the harvest uh, make a difference to that? So, maybe you can slightly touch upon that, and then we can go into the other aspects of the questions uh, as they have come in. Okay. Okay. 
So basically, uh, the yield of tomato to tomato paste is going to vary based on my crop or based on my variety of the tomato. Uh, a typical Indian tomato, the initial bricks can vary right from say four bricks to 4.5 or five in some cases. Uh, what happens, the yield is going to change, as I mentioned, depending on the initial bricks of the tomatoes, because when we are processing, the final output is standardized for 28 to 30 bricks for hot brick tomato paste, or maybe 36 bricks for cold brick tomato paste. So I need to convert maybe from four bricks or 4.5 bricks or five bricks to 28 to 30 bricks. So depending on my initial bricks, the yield is going to change, but typically you can assume that it will be somewhere between 15 to 17%. So average yield, what we can say is 16%. So six kgs of tomato is going to give me one kg of tomato paste. I'm talking about a typical application, assuming that my initial bricks is five, and my end bricks of the tomato paste is 30. Yeah, <clears throat> I hope that answers a lot of questions that the our, uh, our audience have put up. Uh, one more question, I'd like to just put it uh, together and summarize it this way. Okay, we have seen that, uh, that the import price of the tomato paste from China uh, is almost around $100 uh, dollars per ton. So if we are to uh, produce the same thing in, in India, uh, will the cost be the same or will it be less or will it be more? Uh, how do you see that scenario? I mean, how will it be beneficial uh, to put up a plant uh, in India and vis-a-vis -vis importing that? Uh, so a very good question. And uh, also this is a perspective which every processing industry should be looking after. Uh, so when I say, uh, when I saw the, or when what we shared, is typically 1.08 or 1.1 or 1.2 US dollars uh, per kg of tomato paste, which is equivalent to say around 100 rupees a kg. That is, I'm talking about cost of tomato paste. Uh, definitely because of our experience uh, in the industry, we can tell you very surely that our manufacturing price, including the price of the tomatoes is still quite good less. And it, there is a quite good profitability in the tomato paste manufacturing. Unfortunately, the only problem in this area is our farmer sector or our fruit industry is, or the vegetable industry is not consolidated. So a lot of people are not able to supply to the processors the sufficient amount of the tomatoes. And if that is consolidated or if the processing industry consolidates that, they can get a very good rate and constant flow of the tomatoes and we can produce it uh, at a very good economical price. Again, the economics of the entire industry works on what are the global rates of the tomatoes. Uh, we have seen that the rates of tomatoes vary from rupees 2 to rupees 200. But this is what we are talking about, the table variety. The processing variety will vary from right from 50 paisa. Uh, it can go up to say 5 rupees, 6 rupees or 7 rupees. Uh, sometimes 8 rupees, not more than that. So because the industry are processing only in the season. They are not processing the tomatoes uh, throughout the year. But what we get on the table variety is throughout the year. And that is how the rates of the table variety has varied from a uh, huge 5 rupees a kg to 200 rupees a kg. I hope this answers uh, the question. Yeah, <clears throat> that should definitely uh, give a lot of information or inputs uh, on this particular aspect. Uh, uh, now, <clears throat> moving on, I mean, as, as you also mentioned that... Uh, um the the growth of tomatoes is actually spread over a larger larger area geographically yes. and um and and consolidation uh, rather of gro growth has to be the uh, is, a, is a requirement uh, to get the required amount of uh, tomatoes into the processing plant but having said that what will be the smallest size of the processing plant for tomatoes if we were to spread out our manufacturing base uh, to to a large, to our larger geography, so as to uh, the so that the growers can get to the plant much faster. Yes. Sorry. So again, a very good question. As I said, uh, the capacity can vary two or three tons per hour to almost twenty five tons per hour. Uh, although these are very small sizes in comparison with the global standards, as I mentioned, the typically global plants are 
30 tons per hour, 40 tons per hour, 50 tons per hour, or even 100 tons per hour. But that is because the consolidation of back or backward integration of the growing industry or the horticulture industry of the tomatoes in that those particular countries. Typically, uh, I will give an example. Uh, uh, we installed a plant in China and uh, it was uh, on the northern side of the China. There, the processing capacity was 120 tons per hour. You are talking about 120 tons per hour. So, but the problem or what you can say the benefit for those processes was uh, the government has a compulsion of growing tomatoes only in that area. So the entire 100 square meter area was growing only tomatoes. So the plants were, were having sufficient flow of the tomatoes. They were able to run constantly for 24 hours during the season. And that is how they were able to survive. When we come back to India, the typical capacities can be starting from three tons, five tons or six tons or 10 tons, 12 tons, 15 tons and 20 tons. We are not seeing a uh, very successful, although we have plants in India around 25 tons per hour also, but they lack in getting the, that much amount of uh, tomatoes per hour. So a typical line, 10 tons, 6 tons, 20 tons can be run very successfully. Capacity lower than 3 tons per hour doesn't give a, a good financial viability because the amount of investment we are going to do on 3 tons per hour plant and six tons per hour, it doesn't get doubled. It just varies by 25%, 30%. So the per kg cost of conversion of my tomato to tomato paste, higher is the capacity, lower is going to be my conversion cost. Yeah, thanks for that uh, detailed answer. Yeah. Uh, a small uh, technical question, I mean, uh, a rather plant related question. Yes. Uh, which has come up in saying that uh, what is the interval of cleaning? I would say CIP of a tomato processing plant. I mean, he has put up a capacity of six tons per hour. Okay. So maybe a little bit more, uh, maybe information in terms of cleaning, uh, which has been asked by one of our, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the same post or yeah. other uh, audience, yeah. if you can answer that. Yeah, yeah. So again, a very good question because this is important. Uh, CIP in any food processing industry is uh, a must and the uh, frequency of CIP is also important because otherwise it is going to spoil my entire next batches. Uh, typically in India or Indian scenario, we are running the plant for 20 hours and then we are doing the CIP in the four hours and the next batch again starts after 24 hours. Uh, but when I was talking to you about the typical capacities globally, so globally, whether it is California, whether it is China or whether it is Australia, these people run the plant 24 hours and they do CIP once a week. But that is because they have so much of continuous flow of the tomatoes coming in. So plant is not stopped for a minute and it is continuously running. So in typical practical Indian conditions, we are running the plant for 20 hours and then four hours of CIP. Yeah, and also there's one question uh, regarding, uh, um, I mean, shelf life and use of preservatives. So uh, there's one question that is put uh, been put up. So can you provide some more information on the packaging for uh, for extending the shelf life without preservative? Yes. So I mean, maybe we can just touch upon that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there is no preservative in the technology which we discussed. So basically when I say aseptic sterilization and aseptic packaging, the entire product is free from any preservative. So no preservative is added. And the reason we are processing it aseptically is that we should have a shelf life of two years without adding any preservative. So it is 100% natural produce, naturally processed and then packed into aseptic bags. And because it is processed in aseptic condition, so when I say aseptic condition, my sterilization is in aseptic condition, my cooling is in aseptic condition, and my filling is in aseptic condition. The entire filling or the bag, aseptic bag, is aseptic in condition. That is why I am getting, or everybody is getting, two years of shelf life, that is 24 months of shelf life, without any preservative. So the entire processing, what we talked about, is without any preservative. 
Yeah, I think that's a very important aspect about uh, septic processing and packaging, uh, which everybody should know. Uh, there have been a lot of questions about uh, sharing your presentation uh, with them, and <clears throat> that I think that can be informed as well. Uh, that yes. this particular presentation will be available in the you know mm -hmm. website uh, in the webinar series, and it can be seen there from there as well. And there have been a lot of uh, so, queries, questions Shish, around. Shish, yeah. One more, one more. So it is not only available on the website; it's also available on the YouTube. So YouTube all, well. all the all the audience or everybody attending this webinar can access this uh, on YouTube or our, on our website. Both avenues are available. So the entire recording of this webinar and the earlier webinars will be available for the benefit of because the idea is that the farmers, the industry all should be benefited from this that is why this is an initiative from our company yeah and, and of course there have been uh would be other questions that uh that could be coming up and uh, they can answer address their questions to our email uh, which is the sales at nepli.net and uh, you will be getting all the answers uh, from us uh, on your queries that you have right now or it will be coming up after you see our uh, presentation on the YouTube or in the on the or on our website as well actually. So um, yeah I think there, there are some other small technical questions I think uh, we can, they can be taken up separately when we get the questions on that uh, Shri. Yes. Um, I think uh, the, the, the could be some other questions for now and uh, maybe you can wrap it up yes. as you go ahead now. Okay. So these are some of the previous webinars we have covered. Uh, so modernization and expansion of the existing dairy plants. IoT, ready food processing industry, very important topic and uh, everybody can refer this. Fruits and vegetable processing, which contribute to economy while you grow. New trends and technologies in yogurt processing and spara heating and cooling solutions uh, for the food processing industry. These are some of the previous webinars. Uh, Again, the upcoming webinars, uh, which we are going to cover in the coming months, uh, the new age dairy plant automation, uh, important aspect, because day by day, the automation is need of the hour. Why spiral hardening tunnels for ice cream industry? Uh, ice cream industry predominantly had linear tunnels, hardening tunnels previously, and how the technology has changed and how we can assess that technology for the benefit of the all the processes that we are going to cover in this. Application of aseptic storage tank uh, for the aseptic beverage processing. Again, an important topic. The beverage industry is growing by almost 40% every year. So the processes, uh, all the interested uh, audience will be, will be also benefited from this. And the current trades in food safety and hygienic risk assessment, which are applicable to the entire food industry. So these are some of the upcoming webinars from our side. So thank you all the participants, uh, all the panelists, and everybody who's watching this uh, particular webinar. And see you soon for the next webinar.